Next question is from John Draker. What is your biggest regret from your early weight training days? Oh, geez. Well, I think you for, first we have to reword that because I don't think you, any yeah, of us have regrets. Well, if you could go back and train yourself as a kid, like yeah, what would you say? Yeah, so I think that's a better way to word this because I think that we all agree that uh, all of our decisions, good or bad, have led us to where we are today, and I completely uh, accept that, and I'm, I'm happy for that, right? So, but if I were to go back and do something different in my training routine, right, or tell, you know, 20-year-old me who's really just really starting to get into hardcore training, here's some tips, Adam, you should know that you'll mm -hmm. find out later on. The big one that comes to mind right away is squatting and deadlifting. Yeah. And overhead press, those three movements that are the staple and foundation of all of my routines was virtually non-existent for the first almost 10 years. I mean, yes, a little bit here and there, but not consistent. Not like now. It's completely flipped where mm -hmm. it was, I used to squat. I would never deadlift it, so, that was, so for sure that. But uh, squatting and overhead pressing was a very infrequent thing that happened in my routine. And my my thought when it did go in there, it was just to change things up because I love doing the leg press and lunges and leg extensions and leg mm -hmm. curls and all the machines when it came to my leg stuff and overhead. And when it came to overhead pressing, I was rarely ever doing barbell overhead press. It was, you know, dumbbell stuff, lateral raise stuff, machine stuff. Um, so those three movements, um, I always benched. I think every, every most, most all kids or guys bench, you know, that was something I, I did that. But if I were to go back, it would be to squat, deadlift, barbell, overhead press, those three movements, um, way more than what I was doing. I, I agree 100%. Now, I was fortunate enough to be taught by some local power lifters, some older guys that really jacked, that told me to focus on those lifts. And so I did those lifts. But what I also did was I also threw in a bunch of garbage exercises. So it's like I did everything. Mm -hmm. And I would have been way better off. Just focusing. On yes. That. Had I took out you know all these machine exercises and just focused on uh, those and maybe some additional you know, compound lift, uh, maybe accessory movements, but gotten rid of all the other stuff I would have done so much better uh, with my training. The other thing I, I, I would I would do if I could go back in time is I would talk to younger me during that whole over-the-counter designer steroid pro-hormone uh, okay. time. This is back when there was the laws were very interesting, and if it wasn't explicitly banned, you could sell. They called them pro-hormones, but make no mistake, they were designer steroids, like Superdrol is a famous one. Halodrol is another one. These are in the early 2000s, and we were just – popping them like they were, you know, like they were Skittles because they worked so well and because we weren't told that necessarily that's where they were. We thought, oh, it's a pro-hormone. Your body converts it to whatever, and if it doesn't, then that's okay. No, no, no. These things were legit, and I should have known better because when you take them, you can tell, and when you go off, you can definitely tell. And uh, I'm sure that did some – who knows what that did to, you know, my – my hormone production, my future hormone production. Yeah, I, I can think of a few things. Um, definitely deadlifting was not in – uh, the regiment. I didn't, I mean, I did power cleans and, and would take it from the floor. And so it had some, you know, carry over with that. But um, if I would have really built up the base of uh, strength with deadlifts too, on top of all the other like core lifts, I think that would have helped quite a bit. But um, one of the, the main things was when I was really trying to get big because of my position change, I had to go into inside linebacker and I was outside before. And so I was like fast, explosive, athletic, um, and I, my coach was just hammering me about getting bigger and stronger by all means necessary. And so my, the whole summer, I'm just like, just the dirtiest bulk possible, <laughs> you know, everything with deep dish pizzas and, uh, you know, burgers and cheeseburgers and, uh, anything I could stuff in my face and then just training as hard as I could in terms of being in, uh, the weight room with barbells, but not keeping up my athleticism, not keeping my skills training in the protocol, just literally just living in the gym and getting beastly big and immobile. And I <laughs> showed up, you know, for camp and I just couldn't move. I had like terrible balance. Uh, and it's almost like the muscle bound thing where they talk about yeah. where it's just like, and I know how that happens is because you don't maintain all those skills at the same time. And that, that was totally a detriment to my uh, performance on the field. So that was one big thing that I, I wish I could have changed alongside the whole carb loading thing uh, before games. Like what a stupid thing that our coach, like 
everybody's like eating waffles and pancakes and all this stuff before the game. And then we get to the game and everybody's like, <laughs> yeah, like, just crashing yeah. because of, yeah. Anyway, how I much also, weight did you gain uh, during now? This was over a summer. It was over a summer. Yeah, how much 20, weight? 20 or 30 pounds. 20 pounds. Yeah. yeah. I remember wow. Like so much. Pounds, That's too. a lot, dude. It yeah. was stupid. It was like, I literally, it was a chore of just eat, 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 train, don't move. You know, like sit on the couch. And you know, how, how did you feel? Like, I'm sure running straight ahead, you probably felt okay. But <laughs> yeah, I was very strong. Like, you couldn't push me over, yeah. right? But uh, if you came from the side, I would get like demolished. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. You know the the other thing that I would I would tell younger Adam to do also is that while you're doing those three movements too, because I know my mentality as a, as a young kid it was just do more, go harder, and <laughs> is I would I would tell myself to perfect those three things yeah, because if yeah. if i had the the attitude towards squatting deadlifting and overhead pressing that i do today of trying always critiquing my not really worrying about my pr or how heavy i'm lifting but just being meticulous about the movement the and, skill yeah and trying to be great at those three movements oh my god i just i think that if you if you have that as a base as a as a young as a young kid you get good at those movements i, the, I can't imagine that the body that that well i mean you look at people like and i think of people like uh, mike salemi who's a good friend of ours like just how strong and mobile and fit that guy is and i you know he's got the gymnastic background he then got to go I he know. was taught by lou simmons and all those guys like i mean he's yeah. and, and he's such a great example of somebody who has such a beautiful foundation of weight training and then it's expressed in the way he moves when you see the guy move it's unbelievable on all levels right just mobile strong fast resilient like mm -hmm. very impressive awesome